Let's see if it comes back here. I noticed that I'm, uh, something's going on over there on Behance. My stream is just not showing up. Am I back? Hello, hi. Everybody can see me now? I hope. <laughs> Where did I cut off? Somebody let me know. I don't know because uh, everything was fine on, on, on YouTube as far as I could see. Um, but it looked like there was an issue over there on Behance. I'm gonna check over here with my pals uh, at Adobe Live and see if they could give me some info. I wanna know what the last thing was that I that you all saw. Hmm. Did you all miss the whole beginning? It, it said going live and then it went live on my end and then I didn't see anything over here, but okay. Well, maybe I'll start again. <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. All right, here we go. Tell me in the chat, gang. Let me know um, how much of this you saw. And Wade says, you never had it up on your end. Oh boy, what a bummer. All right, I'm gonna kick it off again. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, here we go. Today, we are talking about making seamless tiling patterns in Photoshop. I just went through this whole process where I showed you how to do it uh, the old fashioned way in uh, the first five minutes of the stream. Um, so why don't we quickly do that just so you're aware of what's going on here. Okay, here we go. Oh, I love technology. I love technology. Alrighty, so one more time. One more time. What I was saying was in the old days, in the old days, you had to do this. You had to draw something. Okay. I'm going to make like a super realistic face for you all. Okay. Really, really realistic. This is going to be like... Photorealism, okay? There it is. All right, now so you draw something and you say, what I wanna do is make a tiling pattern of this, a seamless tiling pattern. And the thing you'd have to do is you'd have to drag some guides out, okay? To the center of the document, which I had already done before. I'll go ahead and clear those guides. Pardon me for a moment here, clear guides. All right. Snap those to the center. What you want to do is divide your image into quad, uh, quadrants here, four equal quadrants, like so. And then you would have to do this. You'd have to go and you'd have to make a selection, okay? In the top left corner, Command J. That means duplicate that and slide on down. Come back to that layer. Do the same thing over here. Command J, slide that one down over here to the bottom left. Make sure it snaps perfectly in the corner. Then you come back and you do it again. And you'd go up this time to the top right because we're always going up diagonally and away from the area that you have sourced okay so then here we go final one kablammy command j drag that one up and to the left make sure it's perfectly in the corner otherwise it won't work edit define pattern pattern number two there it is come back here now this is the one i did before which unfortunately you all missed but such is life, okay? So we'll go ahead and do it again. So edit, fill. Now I made that pattern just a moment ago, right? There it is, okie dokie. Now you can see that that's gonna be a tiling pattern. That's the old fashioned way of doing it. Or you could use the filter for offset, okay? And you'd have to still do a bunch of math and all kinds of other nonsense and nobody wants to do that, right? Let's close this for now. And we're gonna come back to this document and I'm gonna get rid of all this garbage because I want to show you what you can do now because life is easy peasy in Photoshop land when it comes to patterns my friends here's what you do here's what you do are you ready uh, uh, boom view <whistles> we scroll on down pattern preview and what look at this everything I draw goes right off the canvas perfect 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 and come right up here and connect that last little bit. And there is my seamless tiling pattern. Simple as that. I turn off pattern preview mode, ba -ba 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 -bum, right here. And I can see now there is my tile. That's the tile I need to save if I want a perfect tiling pattern. I save that tile, I save it as a pattern. Boom, you are done. You are done, folks. That's it. So I guess that's the end of the masterclass. Thanks very much. Have a nice weekend, everybody take care. Just kidding, we're gonna do some drawing. As I announced up at the top of the show, I'm sorry you guys missed that. What we're gonna be doing today is a summer drawing. It's a beachy kind of a theme. We're gonna have some people at the beach, some beachy kind of stuff, and turn that into a pattern. All right, but before I get to that, I just wanna show you something interesting. So let's go back to our view. 
pattern preview. This is right about where I picked things back up on the show and was able to uh, see you all. And you were able to see me. I'm gonna use my lasso tool. All right, and I wanna show you something fascinating. Are you ready? I'm gonna start over here and I'm just gonna draw a selection, okay, like that. Oh, did you see what happened? The moment I closed the selection, look at what happened. The selection itself followed along the border of the tile and it popped itself over onto the left because that's really what we're drawing, isn't it? We're not drawing outside of the canvas. We can see outside of the canvas and we can, Photoshop allows us to draw there for our visual aid, for a reference, but really what we're doing is we're designing a tile that's gonna pattern itself when you're ready. And this is why that selection thing happens. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, so there it is. And um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a, a brush from the upcoming summer 2020 brush update. Oh, that's the crowd cheering in my brain, okay. Uh, and then we're gonna just do this. See that? It knows, it knows what you're doing. So the selection is here, but the art is gonna display over here so you see what you're doing with your pattern. Now what we do is we make a different layer, okay? And then we come over like this, and like this, and like that, and then like this, and like that. Okay, same thing, same thing. Look what it did, look what it did. Now, here's why this is great. I can look at my selection and say, look, I have a very near tangent, a very near tangent there. I don't like the tangents. Get rid of that. And then we do it again. We make something that we say, okay, this is gonna be a little safer. Okay, that's cool. Everything here is gonna line up nicely, right? So this way I'm checking myself. I'm saying, all right, how is this gonna look? when I'm done there, that's safe, that's safe. Okay, no issues there. I don't wanna change that angle a little bit. So I'm gonna do this. All right, lots of space. I like what's happening here. This is decent, this is gonna work. We're on a separate layer, so I just go ahead and I just go ahead and I color this all in like this and then I kinda of add some bits and pieces, some bits and bobs. Like so. Okay, there you go. There's another element. Let's, hey, let's add another layer. Let's add another layer. And same thing, same thing as before. Now I look and I say, how is this gonna tile? Okay, let's see, I'm gonna go like this. Cool, got it, that looks safe to me. Um, let's try this. I'm gonna come over here and do that. Not bad, not bad. Okay, I'm gonna use yellow for this. We're using colors, you may have heard of before, they're called primaries, exciting, exciting. Really breaking, you know, the mold here with this color palette, you know what I mean? Okay, so far so good. All right, now let's make another layer, let's make another layer, and oh, we're gonna choose a nice kind of a green color here. Okay, uh, back to our lasso tool, and let me see, what do I think about bit of action right there. Hold that shift key down. Bit of action right there. And uh, looks pretty nice. That's giving me something cool. I like it, I like it, I like it. Um, let's try it. And there it is, there it is. All right, and see what I can do? I can zoom out and I can say, how's my pattern looking? How's that looking? Pretty nice, pretty nice. Pretty easy, isn't it? Holy Christmas. It's brilliant that different layers can be used. Yes, Cryo, brilliant indeed. Um, did I say summer 2020, Richard? I'm sorry, 2022, whatever. Every year since 2020 is the same to me. Um, it's just one long year. Someone I saw had made a joke. It's summer, it's to, this year is summer, uh, I mean, sorry, it's 2000, 22 spelled T-O-O. Ha 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 ha. It's good that we can joke about these things. Makes it less painful. Okay, one more, one more. And uh, let's see, I'm looking at that space right there and I feel like I could just do a little bit of something like that. Okay. And we just go ahead and we knock that all in. Very nice. See? 
Fun, isn't it? All right, so you get the idea, you get the drill, you can make selections, you can erase, you can paint, and everything just falls into place, all right? So that is how you do it. And now what I'd like to do is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna riff on this summer theme, okay? Summer at the beach. And I'm gonna draw some figures. Um, and we're gonna have fun with that. So I'm gonna come back here. And I'm just gonna use a simple round brush like this to draw some peeps, all right? And some, some ideas here. So, here we go. Number one. And draw like a sort of a beachy person here. And let's see what they're going to be doing. They're going to be, let's see, put a little top of the hat there. They're going to have a tank top on. And I'm gonna make them um, just sitting, sitting at the beach. Sitting on the sand. Actually, I know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do this. Make that pose a bit more interesting. So there is beach person number one, okay? maybe looking up at a seagull or something, okay? Now my plan is to have these drawings, um, actually I'm gonna draw this all in one layer, I'm gonna get really, really bold. Richard, you're welcome, glad you like the brushes. Where do you access this lovely pattern preview, says Leah. Uh-oh, Leah, check it out. View, pattern preview, there it is. It's as simple as that, as simple as that. Okie dokie. Uh, any other questions? Let's see. Any other questions? Uh, instant wrapping paper, says Wade. Hey, I'll tell you what, gang. Spoon flour is the real deal. Go to Spoon Flour. If you're not familiar with what Spoon Flour is, it's a place where you can upload um, patterns and you can uh, and you can sell them right there. Great little resource for artists everywhere. Okay, try it. Spoon Flour. All right, speaking of seagulls, I'm gonna change our scale here. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go here. And we'll just pop a little, little seagull there. Actually, their heads are flatter on the top. Let me just get that right so we're gonna I was kind of drawing more of a pigeon. Seagulls have flatter heads like this. That's more seagully. There's our seagull. And now we're gonna draw, let's see, um, I'm gonna have somebody playing with a beach ball. Playing with a beach ball.
go. I am drawing kind of small. I'll zoom in because it's better for you all to see and better for me to see as well. Actually, let's make that bigger, bigger beach ball. Bigger beach ball. There we go. You know, I might, I might even have time on this live stream to add some color to this. I mean, originally I wasn't planning on adding any color, but could be really fun to have just a few little colors. in this drawing. Let's see what happens, okay? Oops. Somebody with a beach ball. And now let's uh, do something with a little fishy. You know, if, if Gus were here, remember our good pal Gus? He would probably tell me, hey Kyle, that kind of resembles the body of a blunk. And he'd, he'd tell me the fish, because Gus is big on fishing, folks. Gus knows his fishies. I don't. I just make like generic fish shapes. And then hope that um, they kind of make sense. You know? Got some splashy bits of water there. Nice circles. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, drawing ellipses, very important. Hey, Leah says, my latest pattern ranked my highest yet using your latest brush release. What? No way. That's so cool, Leah. Wow. That makes me really happy. All right, what are we gonna do next? What are we gonna do next? Let's see, whoops. Um, we are gonna draw somebody. Now watch, I'm gonna push over here to the left because it's gonna enter over here on the right and I can start to see things tile, which is so fun. Um, we're gonna have somebody now. Uh, splashing in the water, let's do that. I better make sure that I draw a little bigger so I can see what I'm doing. Not too thin, I want it to be legible. And I know what they'll be doing here. We're gonna have, you know that, that thing where you, you play with the paddles, beach paddles, you know? Don't you love undo? It's the best. There we go. And we're gonna go bloop, like that. And there's the ball. So now I can start to, I can zoom out and see the pattern is starting to come together. Okay. Now here's a fun thing I want you to try. Check this out. You can do this. 
can take an element. Now, this is where I should have worked on a separate layer, but don't worry, I'll clean it up. I'll clean it up. You can take an element like this beach sitter here. Okay. And we are going to slice and dice a bit here. We're going to go Command J. Command J is going to duplicate that selection. I'm going to go flippity boop like so and then we go hey hey edit transform flip horizontal like that and what we're doing is we're taking an element right and we're going to place it in such a way that we get that sort of idea of a certain part of the design uh flipping and, and working as a sort of a diamond shape or x shape or i don't know what you want to call it like it's a, more of a hexagonal um, division of space so it doesn't feel like just squares sitting next to each other you take an element that people recognize and you could flip it whatever but to me this is just a nice thing to do and then I just take my little dude down here we find a new place for him to live right you can stick him down there you can find something to do with him you know where it's, it's he's less in the way Right, you can do like, like maybe like this. That might work. I might be able to squeeze something else in over here. Or maybe he's gonna like, be right here off the, off the top of the hat there. Like maybe that's where he lives. Let me like this. And then I can work out something else to put in that space. But you see what I mean? How you how you take something and you you take it, you flip it, and then people are like, "Hey, I recognize that from elsewhere in the art, right?" And that makes the pattern look better. All right. So now it's just a question of filling in the space. All right. So we've got some elements here. We're moving across the canvas, top left to top right, and, and top um, uh, bottom left to, to bottom right, and through the center. So we just got to start to fill things in and make them interesting. Okay. So another thing we could have at the beach is an umbrella. A little beach umbrella. Find a way to throw that in there. Maybe that's gonna live like over here. Okay. So that might be a thing that takes up some space right there. Actually make that, I wanna have that overlap. Overlap or like underlap? What would be the right word here? <laughs> I don't think underlap is a word, is it? All the Scrabble players let me know. We put a few dots there just to say, hey, it's sand, see? Trying to overlap and connect things and just have stuff, you know, all kind of, there's gotta be enough white space, but also like the way that the density of the line work has to feel nice so that you can look through this whole thing and find something interesting to look at in like pretty much every, every section, you know what I mean? That's the goal. Uh, let's see here else. You make it look effortless. Oh, Leah, thank you. Trying to trying my best. Thank you, Kyle. It's, I hate to look with the color, Lorianne says. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Lorianne. You don't, you mean that the color will be difficult to do, or the seagull should have the guy's sandwich in its beak. That's a cute idea. I like that. Um. Seagull's pretty big, isn't he? Yeah, I'm just playing with scale here. Some people are big, some people are small, some some elements, you know. Um, speaking of animals, here's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm no this is this drawing is not meant to be in any way like um you know ac oops accurate here. I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate my canvas, make this easier. I did that with the R key, folks. For those who don't know, the R key is your friend. The R key is where it's at.
Okay, and we're gonna do a little crab here. I'm trying to remember the shape of a crab's body. There's like a... I think it's more sort of like... Like this, sort of like that. Right? I don't know. I'm just making it up. How many legs do crabs have? Are they eight? Does this look about right? <laughs> eh. Whatevs. It's Adobe Live, folks, you know, we're on a schedule. Ain't nobody got time to look up crab anatomy. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, and three. Let me get, so, let me, let me just fix that. So we're not like, we gotta have room for our next little bit there. And see this, I can do this if I want. I can adjust and I can move things like this and I can go, what? Yoink. That looks kind of crab-like. And then here on the back, um, You know, you can make like a little pattern so it doesn't look super boring. Rotate back. And we've got that space nicely filled there. You can zoom out and see how that works. We're almost there, folks. Check it out. Should have time maybe to add a little bit of color. So let's see what I can do here. Um, let's see, I have an idea here. I have an idea. Let's see if I can if I can make it work without <laughs> All right, this is gonna be a little tricky. Little tricky to try and make this happen without any sketching or anything, but we're just gonna go for it. Can you hear that violin my son is practicing? I've got like a soundtrack going here in my head while I'm drawing. All right, sunglasses. This person is uh, reading a book. Whoop. Trying to get this, ah. Uh. All right, we're gonna go like this. Here's what you do when you're in trouble. You just increase the smoothing and that should help a bit. Oops. Ugh. I'm trying to draw at this angle with my hand that just doesn't work. It hurts to draw at that angle, but I'll make it work. For everybody watching, just know that like the rest of you, there are certain angles where my <laughs> my hand is like, I don't draw like that. Um, and I just ran into one of those right here. So here's a person reading on the beach and we'll put them on a beach towel because that's a nice little line that can connect a bunch of stuff here. and even pass behind this paddle like this and creep on out into that corner right there. 
There we go. So that fills that space kind of nicely right there. And let's see. How do you save it, says Marianne. You go Command S, bam. Saves the document. And uh, you're good to go. So we'll go to um, saved. <laughs> also, um, there's crash recovery in uh, Photoshop now that is actually quite good, I must say. It's quite good. I've lost a few documents in the past and they've been fully recovered. I'm happy to happy to tell you all. Um, let's see, what am I missing here? I love doing this kind of pattern for fabric. Yeah, indeed. Underlapping is a word? Cool. I don't think pattern previews on Photoshop for the iPad yet, but just go ahead and use uh, Fresco to make your patterns because you can export them to capture and do the pattern uh, builder there. It's really great. I'm just using a regular round brush, nothing fancy. Brian, to answer your question for today. I mean, normally I would use all kinds of fancy brushes, but not today. Not today. Just a regular old brush. Ooh, nothing fancy. Um, mm, 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 mm. Promised I was gonna clean this up a bit. Man of my word. There we go. Cleaning, cleaning, tidying, tidying. What else do we have? We have this one little space here where something could live and it could be another seagull, could it not? also be a pelican but you know what gang for me to try and figure out how to draw a pelican right about now with just a few minutes left in the stream probably not the best use of my time <laughs> oh boy oh, Billy. Um, we're looking pretty good here. How's that looking for you guys? Yeah, it looks pretty decent. I'm liking it. Looks good. So, let's create a layer and um, let's have some fun. I'm just going to grab a watercolor kind of a brush. It's a summer wash. I kind of like this one. I think it's nice. So, we're going to do... I was having fun with those primaries. They always feel really tight with any of this, okay? I'm just gonna do this. Notice it's gonna color everything everywhere, of course, because that's how it works. And we've got our sort of reddish color here. Give this person like red hair. And we'll use um, that blue for uh, the bathing suit, maybe, and for this kid. A lot of what I'm doing is just kind of just bouncing these colors around. And we'll use that blue for the hair up here. Mm -hmm. 
switch it up a little bit. <clears throat> Blue again, put that over here. Now we're just going to add one other color. It's going to be sort of this teal kind of greenish kind of color. And we'll use it here and there for some stuff. So like Fishy's going to get it. And we're going to use it for the, some stripes on this. Uh, beach ball here. Uh, not beach ball. Um, beach umbrella. And maybe we'll use it for Mr. Crow. Oh, actually, you know what we could do? Let's do a neutral. Let's throw one neutral in here. Gonna use a neutral color. And that's gonna break up some of the space in the middle there and also on Crab a Crab. And you can you can look you can zoom out and see like how your colors whether things feel cramped anywhere or like too tight in one place or whatever and then how you can make sure that that you know that works for you um right Throw some stripes on this. That looks nice. Um, do a bit of that. Do a bit of this. Do a bit of that. And that looks okay. That's pretty good. Okay. See how it works, gang? Thanks, Lorianne. Glad you like that. Thank you so much. Nice. Thanks. Thank you so much for that compliment. I like the aqua green. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bum bum bum. Bing bing bing. Just throwing in some little details here and there. Um. All right, now, check this out. You could even do something like grab a dark color. You could totally like shake this up, go somewhere you didn't expect us to go. And um, you could have a, a dark color for the the area behind everything. You can leave lots of little bits of white and stuff, you know, around the figures and here and there just to make it look more interesting, more watercolory. Right? These little bits like this, where you just sort of split things up and nothing here is perfect. It's all just sort of 
Loosey goosey. Um, one thing I want to make sure that I do is to like cross over into another area just to sort of make sure that there's no tiling on. So I don't want that to look like super repetitive or anything. I mean, everything here is repetitive. You're doing a repeating pattern, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about. How are we doing on time? Looks like I've got about eight minutes. Eight, and um, yeah, I think we'll have a decent, a decent little beachy summery beach pattern here after just um, one little live stream, right? Isn't that nice? So cool that you can do this so fast and so easily with pattern preview mode. It's really, it's a game changer. It's a game changer and it's, it's a really amazingly powerful feature. Honestly, I mean, for people who do pattern design for a living, you know, people who go to the, to Surtex and to shows and they, they work with licensing deals and stuff and I mean to, to have to have done things the old-fashioned way was kind of a pain but this really gives you some some speed and uh, efficiency and allows you to really try things out and know what they're gonna look like immediately it's so great to, to have that assurance that um, your pattern is going to look good you know how it's going to tile, and uh, you can you can really figure all that stuff out easily, quickly, right up front, you know? And right in the middle of the process, too, you can move things around because it works on, you know, on separate layers and all that business. So, I mean, it's, it's a treat. You haven't tried it even if you're not into like making patterns just just try it anyway because it's it's a great thing to to test your design muscles you know it's the kind of thing like if you're not used to thinking like this to thinking with 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 um what's the word i'm looking for is it tessellations is it that fancy word that has to do with things that repeat in a pattern mathematical pattern or whatever i can't i can't Somebody help me out. Cool. And you could duplicate that layer if you want it to be darker. See that? Just Command J, duplicate it again. You could even set it to multiply and see like how that looks. Yeah, that might look kind of nice. I don't know. I can't decide. You could have it on on uh, white. You could have it on this color. You could make another make a copy of that. Um, and then you could uh, change the hue and saturation. Right? You could just come over here and like try different options. You could go for something warmer. That's kind of nice. More print purple. More saturated, less saturated. Lighter. There's so many things you could try with this. Be able to play with these, these choices is the best. I mean, I love how easy it is to do that. It's so fun. You know, what do you guys think? You're welcome, Leah. Um, you would wear a shirt with this pattern, says Afroha says. That's cool. 
Um, so there it is, folks, pattern preview. Now, now let's see what happens. If I go here and I say view, we turn it off. There is my pattern. That's the tile. So then I go edit, define pattern, okay, each. Oh, one. Um, and then I could um, go ahead and make a, a document, you know, 4,000 pixels square. Okay. Go to edit, fill, and right here I can find that pattern. There it is. And just, that's it. Just fill my, my canvas with that pattern. There it is. Okay. That's how you do it. Beach time. Um, and there again is our tile right there. Now, of course, I could try a different color combo like this. And I could say edit, define pattern, and just make a variant, right? Beach purple. Come back here, make a new layer, edit, fill, beach purple. I can compare them. Just like that, hey. What can I tell you? Working as an illustrator, graphic designer in uh, these, these modern times, sure is fun. You sure have so many options. It's amazing what you can create uh, with these tools. You know, if I if I I'm able to look now and see that probably I'd love to have a little something hanging around over here, maybe over here I could I could go more complex with this and and just continue to, to iterate. But um, you all see how how easy it is and uh, how it works. One quick thing before we go, I can try this as well. I can turn off the color. I can go edit, define pattern and we can see like what would it look like with just you know without the color make a new layer and let's fill it edit fill try that last option right there kablamo there you go isn't that fun well i hope you enjoyed this folks i sure did and i'm um, sorry about the little hiccup there at the beginning but you know we made it work everything's cool everything's good and um, Barbie, I'm glad you've been looking for something like this. And now you know how to do it. You are all set. You are all set. So folks, have a great weekend. Thanks for hanging out with me and learning a little something about patterns in Photoshop. Um, and uh, remember, as always, to take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Please remember to be kind. And I'll say ciao for now. Bye-bye.